In today's video, I'm going to show you a modification that you can make to your CX20 transmitter or Phantom transmitter if you would like to greatly extend the range which you can control your quadcopter. Normally, you can expect range of around 900 to 1,000 feet away, but if you'd like to do things like me, fly this out over the ocean or go into a mountainous area, you want to make sure you have enough signal strength on this antenna so that you do not lose the connection between the transmitter and your quadcopter. If you lose that connection, it's going to automatically go into return home mode, and that's not good. So that is why I did this modification. Now if you look at this, you're going to see there's an extra LED right here. It's a green LED. The antenna was replaced with this nice 2.4 gigahertz antenna. This was the original. Looks very professional. You don't see anything sticking out, any modules. I've seen a lot of videos, even though they work. It looks kind of rigged. It doesn't look too professional when you look at the controller. You can see all the wires and the RF boost module sticking out, and it's just something that I did not want. So all you see here is the LED, the antenna, and on the back, what I decided to do is take two 18650 cells and a two cell holder, which happens to fit perfectly between where your hands would go, and it does not interfere in any way with the battery compartment over here. You can still get in and out if you have to. These batteries last a very long time before you have to change them, and you can expect good lifespan out of these as well. You're not going to have to charge these every time you use the remote. Every four or five times, maybe a little less, maybe a little more, you would pop these out. It's very easy. Put them inside this little charger right here. Flip that out, plug it right in the wall. Let me open up the unit now and show you exactly what I did on the inside. I'm going to first show you what it looks like before I touched anything, and then I'm going to show you what it looks like after, and then point out each thing that I did. All right, you just saw what it looked like without all of this stuff right here, without this wire there, without the module up here. So let me show you exactly how I did it. This wire here I could disconnect so I could flop it down, make it easier. All right, let's do that. All right. This is the battery supply leading to the transmitter over here is the connection leading to the two 18650 lithium ion batteries. Power flows into this UBEC Hobby Wing 6 volt regulator. It's a switching regulator and it's designed to be used between two and six lithium polymer batteries or lithium ion batteries. Over here, you can see it right there, all right? You could pull the blue blade off and move it from the bottom two to the upper two, and that'll change it from 6 volts to a 5 volt output. The battery power goes into that module. The other one goes out. This is the negative. And it goes right here to one side of the relay contacts, which are normally open. This is a Radio Shack 1 amp 5 volt read relay. You can pick them up online or at your local Radio Shack store, or you can use one just like this. This is a dual inline package. This is a PRMA 1A05, 1 amp rated, 5 volt, dual inline pin. And you can pull up the data sheet. It'll show you exactly which pins are the relay coil, and you want to look for the normally open contacts. The other relay contact here goes all the way through here to the negative on the two lithium ion batteries. Now the beauty of this setup is that you do not have to have a separate switch turning on the amplifier. I want to turn on one switch and have everything power up at the same time, turn off the switch and have it all power off. In a minute I'm going to show you the full schematic but over here is the LED and there's a 
series resistor to reduce the amount of current through that LED and that gets connected in parallel with the RF boost module. So once it's powered up I'm going to have a green power indicator letting me know there's power going to the RF boost module. Very important. Also included is this piezo alarm circuit. If the battery voltage of these two 18650 batteries drops to a low level now fully charged they're around 8.4 volts safely you may want to discharge them down to 2.9 3 volts this is set to come on when the voltage drops to 6 volts so it's always going to be monitoring these two wires leading to the switching regulator once the voltage drops to a low level the piezo alarm will come on indicating you could still use the transmitter to fly the quadcopter but once you bring it back in you're definitely going to want to charge the lithium ion batteries. You have your two wires connected to the board. Over here is the switch and you take the battery positive which was right here on the right when you plug that in that's on the right you're going to trace that and it goes to the second pin up right here. You're going to take your digital multimeter, put it on a DC voltage range of 12 volts or more, and you're going to connect the black probe to battery negative over here, or battery negative right there, which is on the left. Hold it right in that spot, and you're going to probe the pins on the switch, and you're going to find out which one shows approximately 6 volts when the switch is put to the on position. Once you find the, that pin, you're going to solder a 20 to 24 gauge wire directly to the pin that goes on, and you're going to route that to the relay coil. The other side of the relay coil goes to battery negative, which is the left pin. Find the spot in the board that's connected to the left pin, or you can route the wire and tie it into the black wire here, tap splice it, and heat shrink it. If you look between the relay coil contacts connected to the positive and negative on the transmitter, you're going to see there's a diode. In this case, it's a 1N4003. You can use a 4001. You can use a 1N4148. Just make sure the cathode, which is the line on the end, is connected to the positive going to the switch. The end with nothing goes to the ground. The purpose of that, even though this coil is very small, when power is turned off, there's always a chance you can get a high voltage spike going back into the board, damaging one of the components. So what the diode does, it prevents that back EMF spike from causing any damage to the board. Definitely want to add that, and you'll be seeing that in the schematic momentarily. Everything is glued to the board using E6000 adhesive. It's really strong stuff. Here you can see the toroid on the output going to the LED and the RF module. You can see everything is nylon tied, nice and neat out of the way, so it does not interfere with the movement of the controls. Up here is the RF module. This is where the original wire for the antenna, it was soldered to this metal RF module right about there. You can see what it looks like with the braiding and the center conductor. I'm going to show you a different image right now and you'll be able to see exactly where this goes. I'll point it out because the way it is now it's hidden. Let's take a look. This connector, it's a double female. This threads onto the module on the input for the RF signal. Over here, you have the little adapter cable with the end that would go on like a panel mount. It threads right in. Rather than position this entire module with all the stuff here outside the unit, you can see it fit perfectly inside the unit. This is above these harnesses here. If I needed to get to these two connectors, I can unscrew this connector here, pull this off, and unplug the two connectors leading to the potentiometers. The wire is up out of the way. 
with the housing. There was an extension that stuck out of the top of the housing here. I took a hacksaw, cut it flush on this cover and the opposite cover over here. I also took the ring that went around the base of the other antenna right here, drilled the hole larger, and slid it over the entire antenna. So when you look at it, it looks like it was store-bought, and it doesn't look like it was rigged. Once you cut off that piece of plastic that was extending out for the old antenna, you're also going to have to put both of these shells together and drill the right size hole to accommodate the diameter of the antenna. You want it to fit perfectly into the curve that was cut in the plastic. Once it's done, glue the back of this to the RF module with E6000, put a weight on it, and let it sit overnight and you're good to go. Let me put this back together, power it up, show you how it works, and take a look at the schematic. Now when I go to turn on the power, you can see right there, that's on nice and bright. You can see right there, indicating power is being supplied to the antenna. Really, really nice. Nothing gets in the way of your hands, and this is the way it should be done. Keep in mind, this antenna boosting uh, module right here, you can also use that on a wireless router in your house. So if you have a 2.4 gigahertz router, and you would like to greatly extend the range, in this case, this will work now probably between 2 and 4 miles line of sight. So this is going to be a great improvement for this transmitter. But you can also get a great range increase out of your wireless router if you have a big piece of property and you want to have the signal reach further from your house, something like this, using a regulated 5 or 6 volt power supply would definitely get the job done. Let's take a look at the schematic and I'll show you how you can do it. Okay, now I'm going to show you how you can easily modify your CX20 transmitter or phantom transmitter as long as you're using 2.4 gigahertz. As previously mentioned, you're going to have to locate the switch control on the board. You're going to have to probe each one of those pins until you find the right one that when the switch is put to the on position, you get approximately a six volt reading between that pin and battery negative. From that location, you're going to take a 20 to 24 gauge wire you're going to route it over to the relay coil of a 5 volt read relay. Now the purpose of using a read relay is because the coil current is very low around 10 milliamps so you're not going to be drawing that much current off of the four batteries inside the transmitter. The one that I used has around a 1 amp coil contact I picked it up at Radio Shack. You do not want to use other 5 volt relays because the current draw may be around 40 or 50 milliamps and you're going to greatly reduce the life of the batteries. Across the relay coil, even though the coil is very small, there's always a chance that when this coil is powered off, you can have a high voltage spike back EMF which can go into the board and damage your board. So you want to be sure to use a 1N4148 or a 1N4001 up to 4003 rectifier diode and you want to position it in parallel with the relay coil and you want to have the cathode connected to the anode and you want to have the anode connected to the opposite side of the relay. So just make sure you have cathode connected to the positive wire on that side of the relay coil. That will eliminate any chance of a collapsing magnetic field damaging your transmitter. The other side of the relay coil goes all the way around and connects to the controller battery negative. Over here is the relay contacts. You can see it's open. That's the normally open contacts. When this receives power, this leg you see right here will pull inward and make contact with this one, completing the circuit. So when the switch is turned on, power flows through, closing the switch, you're going to have your two 18650 lithium ion batteries inside the two cell holder. Remember I'm going to be placing links for the batteries, the holder, the boost antenna, as well as the six volt regulator 
in the video description area along with a discount code that you can use. The battery positive from those batteries goes into one side of the relay contacts. The other side goes into the 6 volt switching regulator. The other side of the switching regulator goes to the negative on the lithium ion batteries. Also in parallel with the power supply to the 6 volt regulator you're going to be connecting up the low battery voltage alarm. Positive there, negative there. So you're always going to be monitoring the voltage going into the 6 volt regulator and if it gets below in my case 6 volts fully charged this is around 8.4 if it drops to around 6 which is 3 volts per cell this piezo buzzer will start to sound indicating it's getting close to charging the battery you can still use it but it's going to be an indication that when you're done flying the drone you're going to want to pop out the batteries and charge them it's very important you have this circuit you do not want to drain down the lithium ion batteries too much or you may damage them lithium ion 18650s have a built-in protective circuit which monitors the cells to make sure they're not over discharged or overcharged you can adjust the battery voltage where it triggers by rotating the potentiometer you may want to have a trigger at 5.6 instead of 6 volts I like minus 6 I don't want to get too low to risk damaging the cells over here you have your 6 volt DC output from the switching regulator goes into the toroid where it does a few wraps the purpose of that is to reduce noise in the output so you have a nice clean DC output going into your RF booster module on the way to the booster module the positive goes into the anode of a red or green LED the cathode goes into a 1k resistor connecting to negative you connect the negative to the boost module and the positive as well over here this is the threaded connection where the input is you're going to go to the RF module alright over here these three little terminals very close together you want to solder the center of that mini coax to the center pin right here and you want to get the shielding or the braiding and solder it to the metal can once that was all completed I then took the RF boost module right here glued it directly on top of the RF module using E6000 perfectly in position so the antenna can stick out of the top of the transmitter there's no reason not to have a very nice looking professional job take your time and you will have excellent results I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please rate it a thumbs up subscribe and post links to this video on other websites and blogs also be sure to check out my video playlists as well thank you very much for watching